Okay, so we're uh, picking up the new project tractor, John Deere 5020, which nobody's really going to see videos of this. Oh crap, hang on. I will. Okay, so we reset our rigging and we're going to try this again. This is, this is experimental. So, you think, you think it'll work this time? Yeah. Michael thinks that he's got faith in us. So Craig's going to pull it again. So you're not going to see these videos till after plow day because this is going to be my surprise for plow days getting this tractor running. So let's see if it pulls it on this time. We're going to try to drag the tractor over a little bit. working it's pulling it over no that's not working okay hang on okay so we had to take the skid loader and Michael shoved the tires straight uh, because it was trying to steer off to one side and this is a dead tractor right now so uh, there is no starting it up and turning the wheels so now Craig's gonna go try to pull again and see if we can get farther up on the trailer We'll see what happens. Come on, hooked off the clevis. Well, the cable come unhooked out of the uh, clevis in the drawbar of the tractor, so uh, Michael had to run up there and uh, hook her back up. Well, there she is up on the trailer. So we're gonna head home now. Thank you, Craig and Michael, for all the help of getting it up on. It was uh, kind of a bear, but we managed to get it. Uh, you'll see that in the videos. So uh, we're gonna head home and uh, I'm gonna figure out how to unload it. So uh, that's gonna be fun. Um, at least gravity's in our favor. So we'll just roll it off and hope for the best and see what happens. So uh, let's get it home and get started on this project. Okay, so we got home last night. We got the tractor home safely. Now uh, Dad, Strength, and I are airing up the tires. Scooter's helping us too. Uh, we're going to air up the tires and we're going to get it unloaded. We got all the chains off of it. Uh, the inside tires are full of uh, fluid. So uh, that makes a pretty heavy tractor. It was, it was quite the load for uh, the truck on the way home. And the weights on the inside. So... It's, uh, I think they said on tractor data they can weigh up to like 17,000 some pounds. So, uh, she's heavy. It uh, made the truck grunt on the way home. So now we're going to uh, go ahead and pull it off the trailer. And the next step is to clean it up, get rid of them vines, and then we're going to get it in the shop. And that canopy is coming off. That looks terrible. That's not even... That's not John Deere original, as far as I know. That's got to come off. It looks terrible on there. So uh, we'll get her cleaned up, and then uh, we'll start the process of uh, seeing if we can get it to run. So we're going to unload it now. Dad's strength's going to pull it off backwards with the loader, and I'm going to take the bobcat and lower it down so we have some sort of brakes.
Okay, so we decided that we're gonna uh, work on it out here in the shop that the roof leaks real bad on uh, because the corn planter's got to go in the in the shop here pretty soon. So uh, we're just gonna do it out here in the elements. So we're gonna start peeling all these uh, vines off and see what kind of beauty we got underneath of them. Out of the injector lines. Dad strength said they're all wound up in there. But uh, as you can see, it's starting to come pretty clean. Um, it's like unwrapping wrapping a gift on Christmas. <laughs> oh, and if I'm talking kind of funny, it's because my mouth's numb. I went to the dentist this morning and had some teeth fixed, and the, the numbness is still there, so it's a little bit hard to talk right now. You should have seen me drink Mountain Dew earlier. It run down my one side of my face. I couldn't feel it with that side of my lip. seat before I even had a tractor home and even had it running. Well, this evening, Dad was nice enough to let us bring the 5020 in the shop. So uh, I took the uh, 4955 and our house trailer mover hitch, and uh, we hooked the chain around that flimsy ass front bumper that's got on it, and picked it up and pulled it towards the back, and then I backed it back in with the tractor. So uh, what I've done since we got it in the shop now is I pulled the drain plug out of the uh, engine oil and drain the engine oil out. Found a little bit of antifreeze in it, but not enough to concern me. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to the other side of the tractor and pull the uh, oil filter out, make sure there's no large chunks of anything in that. And uh, as far as the hydraulic, the oil looks new, so uh, we're not too concerned about that. But uh, we do definitely wanna do something with the fuel and the engine oil. The fuel is nasty in this thing. I mean, it's nastier than the 720 that's set for 30 years. So. Um, we got to do something with that and we got to change fuel filters. 
So uh, there's only like, according to the markings on this filter, there's only like 22 hours on the last oil change. But I don't know if you can believe that or not. I don't know exactly what went on 14 years ago. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to just fully service it. And then we'll try to start it. So now we're going to go ahead and get this oil filter out of here. Um, the hydraulic... We are going to eventually service it, but we want to make sure the tractor runs before we go through changing all that oil and stuff. So we are going to crack the drain plug at the bottom and make sure there's no water in it. But uh, it will be fully serviced before we actually take the tractor to the field and try to do anything with it. But we want to make sure that all of its uh, functions are working properly. Because I'd hate to put all new oil in it and then have to split it or do something to it. So we'll just uh, do that at a later time. I want to hear it run before I go any farther. Let's just put it that way. And with the price of engine oil right now, it's kind of expensive just to hear them run. Damn near cheaper to overhaul it and put it back together and do a first start. Cover off. There we go. Oh, there's the oil filter. And I think oh yeah. The hydraulic hose is in a bad spot. There's that. I'll have to take that over to the parts washer. Nasty oil. It's a weird deal. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Let's just sit back Okay, I'm gonna figure out how to get that out of there. Oh, it won't pull out. That's how you get it out. Jerk it out of the pry bar. That'll work. Oil went everywhere now. All the way out on the other side of the tractor. And... Yes. I need to clean it up now. So found something that I cannot believe I didn't find before. I even looked up under the hood when we went to get the tractor and just for some reason it just totally slipped by us. And I think it was just because all the vines and stuff that were packed up under the hood that we had pulled out. And we just realized this now, but I got to looking at that oil filter. I got following the lines. And when I looked before, I didn't see where the other line went. I looked under the hood, and there is an M&W turbo on this tractor. So this tractor has an M&W turbo kit on it. I am so excited about that. I guess I should have knew when there was an M&W pyrometer on, on, on top of the console that it had to have something. But I thought, well, maybe it just had a pyrometer on it. But that is an M&W turbo. So uh, that's definitely a plus to this tractor. So uh, we did get that oil filter out. We had a look inside the oil pan and uh, it looks pretty good. So we're gonna 
get new filter and new oil tomorrow. Well, we got oil, but we're going to get a filter tomorrow, get that filter right there, get two new fuel filters. We'll change them tomorrow night, and uh, we'll see if maybe we can get it running tomorrow night. I know Uncle Doug wants to be here, so uh, we're definitely going to wait for him to be here. So we'll continue this project tomorrow night. So I'm going to go home and get something to eat. So now we're draining all the fuel out of the tractor before we start it. So uh, I've already started the process of doing this. I've already taken like 25 gallon out of it. Holds like 68 and it was fairly full. So I uh, still got quite a bit in there. I got to drain out and there was a nice uh, compression fitting in the line here. So I just take that out and uh, drain the fuel out right there. So uh, I filled up all my jugs that I had. So my grandpa Ed gave me a bunch of these tidy cat jugs from uh, from his cat litter. And the nice thing is sometimes he leaves me a little bit of cat litter in there. So we can, we can dump that on the floor and use that as floor dry. So you can see I had a few mishaps while I was doing it. So floor dry is always a good thing to have in the shop. So now I can continue to drain the fuel out of the tractor. Um, I did get one fuel filter put back on, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait till I drain it all out, and then I'm going to dump some fuel back in to at least fill that filter before I start priming it. That way it won't be so much pumping with the hand primer. So um, they're not John Deere filters because I guess you can't get them as a John Deere filter anymore. So John Deere's actually selling Donaldson filters now over their counter. So, uh, which a Donaldson filter is fine. It's just, it don't say John Deere on it. It's not black. So, okay, let's keep draining fuel and we get some fresh fuel in her. And I got two batteries on their way. And uh, Tyler Shoemaker sent me a set of sway blocks for it. So I do have those. He sent me those in like a day and a half they were here. So great service out of Tyler from uh, Shoemaker's Tractor Parts out in Pennsylvania. Really, uh, Really happy with the service. He does a good job. So let's get the rest of the fuel out. Before we go any farther on the 5020 project in this video, I want to take a real quick uh, break and I want to open up this Olite that I was sent by the Olite company. This is the Warrior Mini 2. They sent me to try they sent this to me to try it out. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna get it out, unbox it real quick, and get it on a charger. So they uh, wanted me to try it out and uh, give them a review on YouTube and what I thought on the light. So that's the first time I've opened it. It is aluminum. It seems to be a real nice light. Nice button there to turn it on and off with. So now I'm going to uh, open up this back part. And it looks like to charge it, you... Oh... The charger just sticks to the back of it like so and then you just plug it in it's a USB plug-in here real nice deal just plug that into a USB adapter into the wall what do we have here oh it's a lanyard for it so you can put it on it oh there's a nice ring there that you can put that on so I'm gonna stick this on the charger and uh, my Milwaukee light went dead a little bit ago because that just takes triple a batteries i thought you know what i'm gonna go get the o light out real quick and we're gonna give it a shot um they actually sent this to me like two weeks ago and i've just been so busy that i uh kind of threw it up in the toolbox and it kind of slipped my mind till tonight i'm like you know what i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna get that out and uh, this is a good project to start using it on. I will be posting the link for this light in the comments below. So if you are interested in the old lights and uh, you like what I have to say about them, go get you one. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in real quick and then I'm going to get back to working on the uh, 5020. Okay, so dumb me. Should have looked at the instructions real quick. When I got the old light out of the box, I turned it on, nothing happened. Well, then I decided, well, I better look at the instructions real quick. It does have a proximity sensor here also that uh, dims the light when you're real close to something. But uh, what I learned in the instructions is there's a piece of insulating film inside. You unscrew this, you pull that out, and then uh, the battery works. So uh, let's go look in the fuel tank and see how much fuel we have left in there. 
We'll use the light to shine down the fuel tank and we'll see how bright it is. Oh, pretty bright. Yeah. I mean, on camera you can't really tell, but it, it's really good. And there's a little bit of vapor in there right now because I blew back through the uh, fuel line with air hose. So there's a little fuel vapor in there right now, just so I want to make sure there's nothing uh, blocking anything. But yeah, I like it so far. The only uh, thing I notice is it's a hair big for carrying in your pocket. But uh, I mean, that's something that I could work around. So we'll keep using it on videos and um, see how it lasts and how it works. So, so far, I like the construction of it. It seems to be a nice, heavy built light. We'll just uh, see how uh, battery life goes, and uh, I'll let you know in a couple weeks what I think. We'll do another review on it. But pretty cool looking, though. Okay, let's get back at it. Well, we are almost ready to try to start the tractor for its first time. We've got some fresh Country Mark fuel in it. The good pink stuff. We've got brand new interstate batteries from Justin at Batteries R Us. Him and his wife dropped them off this evening. Thank you for bringing those promptly. Um, so now, uh, Dad, did you say you got it primed? I believe so. It's primed. So now all we got to do is wait for Uncle Doug to get here, and then uh, we're gonna we're gonna start it. I had to. Uh, put some new battery cable ends on a couple of them cables. They were the clamp on junk kind and they weren't very promising. I think if it runs good, we're going to go ahead and strip all the old stuff off and uh, put all new battery cables. Um, the battery tray needs some attention because the back battery is actually sitting on top of the hydraulic filter housing because the floor of the battery tray is rusted out. But that, that's common on these, the older. 20 series and I don't know if they make a reproduction battery box for this one I'll have to find out but I, I can fix what's there no problem there's still plenty of good material there and another thing I was cleaning out the battery box and there's the return hydraulic line down in here you can see it's, it's wet when I rubbed it with my glove it uh, broke off the last flake of rust that was sealing it up so we're gonna have to do something with that either braze it or we'll run a, a hydraulic hose and just replace that which we have done that on the 4430 before so okay i think it's time to start it don't you think i think so okay well we're going to try it first start in 14 years <laughs> not of okay so we do have a running tractor the uh, power steering line in the frame rail on this side it's a steel line I'm assuming it's power steering line it uh, blew out so that's something we got to fix um, the transmission when you go to shift it it's a little funny 
we think something's dragging, like the clutch might be dragging a little bit or something of that nature, we need to check that out. Uh, we're going to pull the hood off. I want to check the turbo out. I want to make sure that it's spinning. It's probably something we should have done before we started, but it really didn't hurt it. But I do want to open that up and have a look at it. Got to put a seat on it. I got a new throttle knob for it. Um, I've got that one return line in the battery box to fix. Uh, the dif differential lock is froze up, so I want to free all that up. Three-point hitch lever doesn't move. That needs freed up. Um, just a lot of odds and ends of small stuff, really. But the major things are good on it. It runs. We did, we did get it to move. We pulled it up, backed it up, and uh, everything seems to be okay. The clutch doesn't slip. You can hold it with the brakes and about kill the tractor. So the clutch definitely doesn't slip. So seems like everything's good just needs a bunch of minor little things so anyways this is where we're going to end this video i'm going to start another one uh, i don't want them to be too long and there'll probably be a series of videos on this tractor i'm sure because there's going to be plenty of stuff that's going to need fixed as we go um and then once we get everything good on it we'll start on the cosmetic stuff like cutting these off we're not sure what they were for uh we thought maybe there it had a loader on it one time. We thought maybe it had saddle tanks on it for planting and spraying. We're just not sure what them were. So we really don't know the whole story on the tractor. But when we did start it, the three-point hitch came up. So that was a good thing. And we got that ugly canopy off. So anyways, that's going to be the end of this video. So uh, thank you for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And we will see you all in the next one. Oh, and these duels are coming off too. I can't stand looking at them anymore. Should have just took them off before we even brought it in. So anyways, thank you for watching.